Hey, what's up, guys? It's Alino here, and this is part two for the Anno School series. Make sure you guys check out part one. Part one is probably the most important uh, part for the school series because it's gonna highlight almost all the main tips that you should know about Anno already. Now, part two, we're gonna dive deeper. There's gonna be more aspect to how to fully utilize this hero but today we're going to talk about the sleep dart and because i think it's the most important ability on anna like hands down if you don't know how to use the sleep dart you're gonna there's no really there's no real point in playing anna casually and hoping you land sleep darts you have to know how to land sleep darts i think there's a champion that and the right hands is very scary so it's good to know about this stuff so, there are three different ways of sleeping targets, right? The first one is the flick shot, right? So the flick shot is because sleep dart has a cast time, you can flick shot enemies without necessarily having to have your crosshair on them. So this is the flick shot. Nap time. Now, I pressed my sleep dart right here, but then I moved here. So occasionally, you want to flick shot like that. And maybe you do do it without really knowing sometimes you do do that so give an example right it's like quiet. that so my my cursor was here and i quickly switched it like this so you can quickly flick shot now the second one prediction of movement sleep dart you sleep dart based on their movement patterns understanding just the basic method of sleeping and the basic method of sleeping with anna is to lead your shot to where you think they're moving so let's take a training bot right here i think this is something that you guys will obviously know but for the sake of this being an anna school series aimed for beginners and veterans alike i'm still gonna include this so let's see here right we have an enemy here he keeps patrolling left right so i'm gonna sleep right about Lights here out. that's gonna hit him so being able to know your sleep dart travel speed and knowing where, where your sleep's going to end up as they're walking, I think that's something very important to to learn. So go ahead and go in training bots and just try to sleep targets uh, the direction they're running. So this guy right here, bam, just going to hit him right there. Um, I explained the Anna School series, uh, the part one, when, I, when you see a Reaper jumping left, right, left, right, you know he's going to jump left now. You analyze his pattern, you know his... His, I don't know if body language is the right word, but you know the, how this Reaper is playing. So then you can predict he's gonna jump here, and then you can sleep dart him here as he's descending. Now, when heroes descend in this game, it's a lot easier to sleep dart them because they only go in one direction, down. So as they're going down, you position your sleep dart where they're gonna descend. Now, obviously, you can move left or right as well but you have to see are they gonna jump left are they gonna jump right if then adjust accordingly and sleep dart so that needs a little bit of speed that needs a little bit of practice and then you'll be able to pull that off so so far we've explained flex shotting which is the basic term of pressing sleep dart and then Next switching time. to a target immediately this can be helpful in many situations sometimes you don't always have to flex shot in some cases flex shotting is really good when you're up close in front of someone's face and like against a giant hitbox like Reinhardt it's really good to flick shot him sometimes uh, when you're like busy hitting someone and then you quickly flick shot him and kill him so that's just something to keep in mind alright so we've explained leading your shot uh, sleep dart we've explained flick shot now we're gonna explain the third one which is long range sleep dart now long range sleep darts are really good against Widowmaker especially really 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 good against Widowmaker because when Widowmaker is aiming I'll switch to Widowmaker just Just let you know obviously when she's aiming One She moves shot. a lot slower One compared shot. to unscoped and it's very easy to sleep um, A Widowmaker very very easy um, They tend to go up high ground so you can see them and then as they move left to right It's very easy to just hit them right in the middle and it's gonna it's gonna land it's very important to see, by the way, because uh, you can miss that sleep dart, even if it's in long range, it's possible to sleep if they keep moving A, D, A, D, A, D, but you want to be able to sleep dart there based on their movement. So if they keep A, D, A, D, A, D, position your sleep dart so that it hits where they're moving around this general area right here. So 
that's something that will also require a lot of Ana games, a lot of practice. So sleeping someone long range is Never not so hard, fighting for what you believe um, but it can be hard. Um, it just needs precision. So if I see a Widowmaker there, I'd hit her and sleep dart. Now the reason I hit first and then sleep dart is just because I want to add that extra damage and then sleep her and then hopefully someone else, maybe someone from a distance, maybe your own Hanzo, snipes her head while she's sleeping and then that's a dead Widow. Keep in mind though, if you hit someone, they are in the state of, oh shit, I need to move. So that's also something to keep in mind, like if I shoot someone, he's gonna be like, oh shit, I need to move. Because the thing is, if you shoot and then sleep, sometimes it's hard to do that when they're gonna move at the last second because you can miss the sleep dart because now you've alerted them, right? You've alerted them with your fire. They're alerted, now they're scared, they're gonna move away because they just got hit. It's, it's a it's a reaction. It's, it's, we humans, we react to shit when we are aggressed upon, right? That's that's what most players would do. They'd walk away. So you will miss the sleep dart. So you have to keep in mind of that um, as you're doing that. But it can be very good uh, in a lot of situations, especially up close range. Um, especially for targets who have over 200 health. You hit oh, sleep, you and then you can just combo them like this. With a full combo punch, which we explained in Anna School Part 1. So I suggest uh, looking at that. So that's not to say shoot, sleep is a bad thing to do. It's it's really good in a lot of situations, especially up close combat. Um, long range, debatable, because if you hit them and then sleep takes Experience travel time. So the, the sleep takes longer to land compared to like here. The sleep takes longer to hit there. So they can move at that time. Um, so that's something, something you want to definitely know. Last tip, this is actually one of the most important tips uh, with Sleep Dart. Um, so you know how on episode 1 we explained that when you Sleep Dart you have to wait for audio cue and then full comp with them? So I'm gonna add XR to that, so let's say I sleep him. Now if you notice there, we did wait for the audio cue, but if you looked at my eyes, I was also looking at the cooldown of the sleep dart. So the time for the audio cue is 8 seconds. So 8 seconds but halfway. So not as soon as it becomes 8 seconds. A bit behind. So like 7.5 seconds almost. Pretty much. So let's just show you that again, okay? And it's the sound, the audio cue of the sleep dart as they're, they're inhaling, right? As that inhale sound with the cooldown of the sleep dart you can combine that easily and you'd know when to attack so try to get it make use of this try to get into the habit of looking at your sleep dart cooldown so whenever you hit it let's show you again okay sleep this guy okay watch the cooldown that's the cooldown as soon as it became eight seconds and as soon as i heard the inhale sound a few seconds after the inhale sound I will do it one more time, just for inconvenience. Oh, you this time I will be quiet. There we go, see? As they got up, they couldn't move at all. Like, he was just standing here, because if you time it perfectly right, they can't move. Like, a soldier would die. Any 200 hero, any 200 HP hero would just die. If you just do that properly. Better time. And I tend to stay behind my enemies when I sleep dart. Okay, that's a perfect one right there. What you want to do basically is whenever you sleep someone, it's really good to stay behind them instead of in front of Okay, I'll, I'll tell you why. You're probably thinking, what's the difference? I'm standing in front of them, behind them, so what? Why does that matter? I'll tell you why, okay? So, let's sleep this guy. I'm in front of him. Tell me what's wrong with this. The problem with this is when they're sleeping, they their camera is here. You're always in front. This is a first-person shooter. Your camera's in front where your gun is, right? So they're slept here, and you're standing in front of them, looking at their slept body. What does the slept person do? He opens voice chat. I need hey, healing. I need healing, or he he uh, holds push to talk. Need backup over here. Tells his team need backup. Anna's on top of my body. She's trying to do something, maybe her team's coming, I need help. If you stay behind them, 
Lights out. This makes them think I'm walking away here, but really I'm behind them. And then I combo them, and then they die. Hostile down. They think that you're gone, which gives you this element of surprise in a sense. It's not really an element of surprise, but like it's an element that you should add into what you're doing as you're sleeping someone. It makes it so that they think they're safe, and giving them that it's sense quiet. of safety really helps you big time here. The element of safety. You to fight like that. They think they're safe because they're slept and they're just looking forward like, Oh no, I see no one in front of me. I can't see behind me though. Boom, they get wrecked at that time. Um, keep in mind that you don't always have to do this combo sleep dart thing. So let's say I sleep him. Sleep. Oh look, I have a Reinhardt here. What does Reinhardt do? He pins him across this wall. Boom, dead. Sometimes it's good to let your team do the thing instead of you having the full combo. Because um, Reinhardt could just pin him and that's it. It's over. But, for the love of God, if you have... Let's say I slept him. And then you have a Tracer coming here. She's all like, hey ya! Walks here, holds left click as they're sleeping. It's just the worst thing you can do. Or a Moira. A Moira is actually the worst one. If you have a Moira. Let's say I slept him. Moira shows up. What does Moira do? Right click! One tick damage. Right click! What does the training bot do? Or let's say this training bot's a tracer. What does he do? Immediately recall. Reaper. Immediately wraith form. You don't want to give those... It has to be something big. You don't want to give the enemy a chance to escape. So you have to talk to your team whenever you sleep someone. Talk to your team. That's why every, every game I play in competitive, I always have a microphone. I always, always talk. Like It's so important with Anna that you have proper communication. Especially, I think, personally. I think, especially bronze silver gold and maybe low platinum they they don't know about this Anna technique or they, they just they they don't know so try to reinforce it tell your team but I think some platinum players would know this I'm fairly certain because platinum is a good level as I'm pretty sure platinum players I mean if they know about Anna's skill set and everything they'd know Sleepy. So jump sleeping is not the worst idea ever. Um, it's still it keeps when you're jumping you're a lot more mobile so you're a lot harder to hit. So it's good to jump sleep in a lot of occasions. So don't be afraid to do that. That is pretty much it for Anna School Part Two. I uh, hope it helped out. Make sure to sub for more of this. I, I I'm really passionate about Anna. I really just I've been really loving Overwatch. Um, and it's kind of like this new thing I'm doing now with Overwatch and I'm a big fan of this game. I played a lot of League of Legends. If you see my past videos, if you're a new viewer, um, you'd see that I did a lot of League of Legends videos. It's tiring me out. I love Overwatch. I've been playing Overwatch since March 28th and I have so many hours on it already for the last three months now, four months. Um, yeah, three months. So I hope this little part two series for the Anna School helped out. And I will see you guys in Overwatch. Peace out.